Hi, my name's Kelly. I'm a CPT therapist and forensic psychologist. And today I wanted to explain a little bit more about the cognitive model of health anxiety. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to talk through the formulation and the model that you can use when you are working with someone who experiences health anxiety. So, as you can see, this is the cognitive model of health anxiety, probably one that you are familiar with. Um, so it's by Sarkovkis, Warwick and Deal. So within this, this is when we are looking at people, obviously, who are experiencing health anxiety. So if we start at the top, an individual will have some sort of stimuli for their health anxiety to be triggered by. So that could be an event. So that could be really anything that, that happens to them. I've worked with people and it's been after sometimes a festival where they've engaged in certain behaviours and some things kind of change within their body. Or it could be that they've been hearing about other people becoming unwell and obviously that links into health information. But within that, that stimuli, there can be any sort of event, but then that will be linked to some sort of sensation um, either in their body, whether they perceive it to be a, a correct sensation or if it's something that's amplified by everything else that's going on within this model. And obviously there is going to be that, that health information. So there is going to be something that they feel means that they are unwell or they have something that isn't quite right with them um, and with all of that there is whatever the stimuli is there's going to be some sort of trigger so if you don't like the word stimuli trigger is just as fine and when that stimuli happens you have selective attention so whatever sort of threat interpretation so your threat interpretation is in the middle and everything kind of is woven around that so they will focus on the whatever fits that negative interpretation. So, for example, if they maybe start the event could be kind of they started to, to run more than they've noticed they started becoming quite breathless. Therefore, every time they go for a run, they will notice how breathless they are. So that means that something's wrong with kind of with my lungs or kind of something isn't isn't quite right with me internally. Um, and then they, they will focus on that because they will just anything that doesn't fit within that puzzle or kind of what they, they think is going in there is almost disregarded. So anytime, maybe if we're using the running example, anytime they go out for a run and they don't kind of get so breathless, that's that's kind of placed in the back of their head. So you've got the, the stimuli and then that sort of selective in, um, attention, which which proves that the stimuli must mean that something's happened and therefore the kind of the threat is increased. Um, and then that, that kind of the physiological reaction, so kind of the, the next box or kind of the next cycle down. And as I said, that is the, the confirmatory evidence. So anything that happens physiologically is then proving that something isn't quite right there is something that is going on and then obviously that therefore increases the, the threat that they're experiencing um, and it could be any physical physiological reaction it could be as I said it the breathlessness it could be that maybe there, there's a mole that kind of on their skin and then that mole is definitely rising or it's definitely changing even though it may not be um, but because of kind of that the selective attention they're looking at it and then the physiological reaction they could maybe think it's becoming more itchy um, and that is all kind of confirming with fitting in with that selective um, interpretation then you have the safety seeking behaviors so that is as I said things that disconfirm what they are believing are kind of disregarded or they're kind of ignored or anything that could prove that disconfirmation is sometimes prevented so for example again using the running example if they may push themselves really really fast when they're running um, it won't be that they're running faster that is causing their kind of increased breathlessness um it's because something is going on inside of them or they may even stop running altogether um and, and they want to kind of it's preventing that misinterpretation so it's anything that 
sometimes they do it as i said to prevent the disconfirmation so kind of ignoring all the times when they've run and they've been okay or it could that they prevent that increase in symptoms so they might go um, not go out for running anymore and um, but it's anything that is safety seeking so they're trying to manage that anxiety what they're feeling but in doing so they're not proving that their anxiety is wrong and therefore kind of that threat continues to increase and then you've got the affect changes so kind of the emotional changes and this is when there is an increase in sometimes in the negative thoughts so kind of that, that spiral that they get stuck in um, and the physiological arousal so if their thoughts are increasing and they're becoming more anxious or more worried there's going to be a natural physiological arousal within them which is also going to increase so that kind of paired together then further confirms the threat so you can see all of these cycles are working separately but they're all interwoven with that threat interpretation so all of these things are kind of confirming what's going on obviously the idea of sometimes preventing it um, but still there is that changes in affect even if they stop running they may then notice that even when they're walking up the stairs, they're getting breathless and then therefore the negative thoughts will continue to increase and the physiological arousal, which could be an increased heart rate, which obviously can lead to breathlessness as well. So I hope that explains the model maybe a little bit better. Um, if you do have any questions, please pop them in the comments. And as always, please like and subscribe. I've got plenty more videos like this and if there are any other specific models or formulations you would like me to share or explain in greater detail then please let me know. Thank you.